Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Simplify Your Life Summit. My name is Justin Crosscarrion. I'm joined today by the founder of Lift Ace Your Space, Leanne Pruitt. Leanne, thank you so much for being on here. Justin, I am so excited to be with you today. I just, I love the title of your summit and it just, it just, it speaks to my heart. So I'm so happy that I can be here with you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very excited as well because this is something that's um, become a, a, a ritual for me is really trying to ace my space. So it's awesome to have a professional in here. So for all the viewers, Leanne helps people ace their space, whether it be their closet, their pantry, their home, all over, so that they can free up this thing up here and have more opportunity to hit their goals, um, just be less cluttered, right? And the last thing we want to be is cluttered physically, but also cluttered mentally. So Absolutely. have you always been this way when it comes to organization? Was that how you grew up or how this all um, No, not at all. Um, as, as a matter of fact, I was, I was so messy uh, when I was in graduate school. I had this, um, I had like a, 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 a studio apartment. And when people were coming over, I would just, I would take the clutter. I would just, I would shove it under the bed, shove it in the closets. I would open drawers and push it in. In the kitchen, I would take stuff and put it in the oven. It's like, fortunately, the oven was never on and the, the place never burned down. Um, but yes, I, I mean, so I knew instinctually that this clutter was a bad thing. I didn't want my friends and people seeing that. And I think the thing that really made me um, take notice about it not being so instinctual and being really a, this is a thing there was this guy that I really liked and we would do stuff together and of course he was meticulous I mean his car his house everything and of course if I knew he was coming by and we were going to do something I would you know push it push stuff away well one day I was sick I had like the flu or some stomach virus or something and I felt terrible um, and he was being nice. He was, he was going to come by and bring me some soup. And I didn't know, of course, I didn't know this. Um, but also, I, had, I didn't have any energy to clean up anything. And I remember when I opened the door, the doorbell rang. I opened the door. When he walked in, the, just in the look on his face, he was shocked. It was like he had never seen the space like that. He thought I was a relatively, you know, <laughs> organized person. Um, he was very nice. He left the soup. Um, we talked for a little while and then he left and then I don't think we, we like never did anything together ever again So I, at that point I thought you know, I really like that guy and I knew The clutter was something that got in the way so I'm like, you know, cl if clutter can get in the way of this What else is clutter getting in the way of? Mm -hmm. and um, So that's when I really started um, be, You know becoming decluttered and it it, it did. I mean, there were a lot of false stars. So I would I would clean up and everything would get cluttered again. And I, but but after through trial and error, I really figured out a system that worked for me. And I also figured out that you really your mind you have to your mind has to be in the right place. You have to be focusing on what's available on the other side of the clutter um, and what your why is. Um, just having a clean room and having a clean space is not a good enough reason to declutter. It's like you have to want something deeper. And I kind of realized all that. So that's, yeah. that's how I got into it. Yeah. What a way to get started. It's so yeah. funny, the things that motivate us and, and push yes. us. So why is it so powerful to um, declutter our space when it comes to our mindset and just, you know, being a human being? Right. So first of all, um, my definition of clutter really is anything that gets in the way of you and your goals and your dreams. And of course, you know, I work, I, we start off when I work with people, we start off with the physical space, but it's also, it's like your mind. It's, uh, you know, you've got, you can have a cluttered schedule. Um, your diet can be cluttered weight, you know, people who have, and, and that's like, that's like one of my issues. Um, that's what that's one that I'm still working on is like you know weight is clutter weight stops people um, and their and you know and their diet stops people um, but the thing about clutter getting back to the physical clutter because that's what I what I do where I do start with people um, even if you think that clutter is not bothering you it's taken up physical and mental bandwidth and it's like it's you don't, that bandwidth is taken up. You can't, you can't pursue your goals and dreams. Um, you don't have the bandwidth to do it. Um, and also, 
if you've got physical clutter, it's a good bet that it's there's it's there's some corresponding mental clutter up there as well. Gotcha. And when you say bandwidth, can you elaborate on that just for anyone who's uh, wondering what that may be? Yes. Yes. So so um, think about it like this: like you've you've got where 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 you're watching this um, talk today on your internet, um, and you have a certain amount of bandwidth that you can you you can use to um, to access the internet to access your programs. If you have a lot of different programs open, maybe your computer is much slower. Um, maybe maybe you're getting the little um, the little sign that's you know spinning spinning sign. Maybe th things are not coming through. So so having too many programs open is taking up space that could be used for something else. And it's the same way you know when I talk about bandwidth like like in that way. That's that's a good with our computer it, up here. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Uh, mm -hmm. So what would be the benefit to when it comes to simplicity with decluttering? your space. So how can that simplify your life? What are some ways that simplifies it? Right. So of course, this is the net, you know, this is what your summit is all about is simplifying your life. And um, I mean, I, I mean, there's probably nothing more fundamental to simplifying than really getting the clutter out of the way. Um, mainly, you know, clutter takes up I mean, it takes up physical and mental bandwidth. It also takes up time. I mean, if you can't find your keys, you're sitting around looking for that. Or if you can't find, you've got to go to your tax account. You can't find those documents that you need. You're, you're spinning your wheels. You're spending time. You're stressing yourself out. Um, and there's something that you need. You're about to cook a recipe in the kitchen. And you need something... Um, you need a, some, a piece of equipment and you know it's in there you thought you had it but you can't find it so you go out and buy it and you know so so when you when you know where all of your things are when you've simplified when you've decluttered when you when it's only things that you love and that you use um, and you know where they are it just your life flows so much easier. You can find your keys. You can find the paperwork you need. You can find um, that piece of equipment that you need to, you know, that special whisk that you need to make that recipe, things like that. And you, you do it with ease. You don't have the stress of looking for stuff and thinking, I'm getting later, I'm getting later, I need to be here, I need to do this, where is it, I'm pulling my hair out. So that's, that is, I think it's just such a key to simplifying. Totally. And it's um, pretty remarkable how much more energy you'll have, you know, because that's, you're still, you know, yeah. using a lot of bandwidth and energy when you're thinking, where are my keys? Where did I last leave them? Where did I go? What was my last steps? And, um, you know, my mom, growing up, I always, she would always tell me, you know, if my head wasn't connected to my body, I'd lose it because that's how everything was. Mm -hmm. um, and now I've learned how, you know, just having a place for everything and cleaning up as I go, just frees up so much more space. It's incredible. So when you have someone that you're working with, right, they come to you and they're like, Leanne, I don't know what I need to do. Like, I just need everything's a mess. My office, my pantry, my kitchen, everything. I don't know where to start. Where do exactly. I start? Exactly. Well, you know, that's, that is such a good question because people do often come to me like in that way, like everything is a mess. <laughs> and, and the reality is you're not going to get everything decluttered at once. So um, what I do with people is I actually have them look at all their spaces um, and assess the space. It's like, you know, is this a real pain point for you? Um, is this, you know, is this a, is this something that would really make a difference? If like, if you're going, if you wanted to, if you had a real desire to have dinner parties and your dining room is really messed up and other rooms are too, but it would just really fulfill you to be able to have your friends over um, for dinner or something. Maybe that's where you start. Um, but also to look at if you have a room that you've been trying to clean up and there's a lot of sentimental or, um, you know, a lot of sentimental clutter in there that would be hard for you to look at. Um, that's maybe a place you don't want to start. So you need to assess your spaces. I have like a series of questions and I can share that. I can, I can uh, put, uh, share that with your, with your audience that I ask people and it, um, it helps them 
determine exactly where they should start decluttering. And then what you do, you pick a space and then you put blinders onto the other spaces. Don't get, you know, it's like once if you start, you know, kind of, it's almost like a shiny object center. Oh, I need to go clean that up. Oh, I need to go clean that up. Um, you're really not going to make progress. You need to focus on that space you're in. Then once you've, once you've finished with that space, then you move to, you do those questions again. You move to the next space that, that is the place for you to start. And that's, that's how I help people to really decide where they need to start uh, decluttering that will be the most effective for them. And will also, you know, be able to give them a win, help them, help them, have a win in decluttering. Yeah. It's so funny to make the connections, right? Like everything is so interconnected. So for example, pick one space and put on those blinders. You know, something yes. um, I coach a lot of my clients is if they're going to work on one thing, write it on a sticky note and write that thing down because it's so easy, especially now with like our cell phones or our computers, we get notifications from every which way. And it's so yes. easy. Oh, I'm just going to answer this quick email. Oh, I'm just going to get to this. Right. And putting on those blinders and like really focusing is huge. Yes. What would you say are the three biggest mistakes that you see people make when they are trying to just maybe declutter by themselves or they're like, okay, thank you. And just go do it by themselves. Well, uh, the first mistake that they make is just what I told you. They just, they pick and they just start. They don't, they don't actually sit back and assess, all right, what's really going on? What, I can't do it all at once. What's going to make the biggest difference for me? They just start somewhere and maybe it's a, maybe it's an area that's hard to declutter because it has all those sentimental items. Um, or maybe it's, maybe it's not the right place. And they, they just, they spend their wills that way. Another um, mistake that I see people make is they like they they say they say all right we're gonna I'm gonna declutter my closet or I'm gonna declutter my kitchen or whatever and they pull everything out and and they start working on it. it's like I'm you know I've got I'm I'm gonna get up I'm gonna do this um, but the the thing is it's like just how that clutter is taken up that physical and mental bandwidth it really does take a lot of physical and mental effort to declutter and if you're if you're decluttering for more than about a couple of hours, um, particularly if you not if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get tired, you're going to get worn out, and then all your stuff is out, and you've only it's it looks much worse. You're exhausted. You're like, what was I thinking? You put it back in wherever it was. You put your stuff back in the closet. Put stuff back in the in the counters. It's more cluttered than ever, and you're like, well, that was a mistake. I'm never going to do that again. So that's like the second mistake. And I think the third mistake that people make is they really start um, like they don't have a good plan for how to determine if, if they need to keep an item or not. And they don't have a good plan to really um, address those items that are that are sentimental. Um, I mean, and there, there are all sorts of things that they can do, but they do need a plan. They need to have questions that they ask. They need to really be able to determine, you know, is this item serving me or is it the memory? Sometimes they need to have, they need to have a friend come over and just sit with them while they're, sometimes just sit with them while they're doing it to make them do it. So those are the three things that, um, three mistakes that I see people make. Yeah. So when it comes to, I'm curious, when it comes to taking everything out of, a space so this is something that I do um, I just take it all out but when I take it out I put it into certain piles mm -hmm. so then I know which pile to grab what would you say like is that what you do with your clients as far as having them take everything out or how does that as far as decluttering a space right to right. reorganize it what does that look like with you and your clients um so here's the method that I have my client that I that I teach my clients. Um, when you pick that space, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask those questions. We're going to determine what space it is that you should be decluttering. Then when you take that space, you're going to you're going to subdivide it into very small little subsections, even smaller than you think. If you're doing a kitchen, start with a drawer. Um, if you're doing your closet or something, um, start with like your shirts or even half your shirts or this section. And I do want them, I, I mean, 
you are going to pull everything out of that subsection. You're just not going to pull everything out of the whole space. And, you know, get it out of that little subsection, get, clean it, you know, clean that area of the closet, vacuum it, clean the drawer. And then you really determine you want to spend most, you want to set a timer for about, you know, two, one to two hours. You need to at least have an hour that you can work on this. But I really don't want you, people doing more than two hours because then that's when they really get tired and frustrated and don't know what they're doing. Um, and you want to spend most of your time really determining, does this item stay or does this item go? Um, and then you might have some maybe items, but again, that's when I want to, you, you really need to try and address those maybes and get them down to as few as possible. In the items that are staying, put them back. Um, the items that are going, put them, if they're going to donation, put in the donation box. If you're gifting them, if they're trash or recycling, put them where they go. Then... During this time frame, you've got a small section of your space decluttered, and you don't have all that stuff out in your space so that it's, it's, it's keeping you from doing your daily tasks until you get to your next decluttering session. Gotcha. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Especially if something comes up, you need to leave. You don't have, as you mentioned earlier, everything out. You just exactly. maybe have, you know, your clothes. Um, right. That's huge. Mm -hmm. So for me, I definitely, you know, one of the, biggest benefits for me learning how to declutter was when I first moved to San Diego, I moved five times within like two years. So moving is a great way to declutter it, because it, is. It, it disengages that emotional attachment to things. Do you have a, like a process when it comes to those things that, um, you know, it's been tough for me at the beginning, but now I'm becoming a lot better. I'm like, okay, I haven't looked at this picture or done anything with this thing since, you know, two years ago when I moved. Do you have certain um, methods or questions that people ask? I know you mentioned, is it serving me? But anything else for those people that are like, I don't know if I want to get rid of this. Like anything right. that you have that kind of make or breaks that? Well, there, there are a lot of things that, um, that, that I help people with. First of all, um, when you have these sentimental items that you're not sure if you want to keep or not, um, I really encourage people to think about um, – is this is it this item that's important to me? I'm trying to look like like is it this is this candle important to me, or is it important because I got it on a really special vacation? Do I really like this candle, or is it the memory that I like? Now, if they determine that they want, that it's the item that you like, um, then there's some th Then there's one direction we go. But if you if it's the if it's the memory, it's like we look at ways that we can remember it, and and still be able to let that item go. Um, maybe you if it's a like um a, a like a, a piece of clothing. Like maybe it was a bridesmaid dress you wore in your best friend's wedding, or something you got on vacation. You, what you can do is like you can maybe take a little piece of fabric or a button from that dress and take a picture of you in the bridesmaid's dress and like maybe put that together. Uh, I often tell people to if they're to take pictures of the sentimental things and they can put them in. You could take like just a blank notebook. This actually isn't blank. It's got stuff in it. But if you it, you could take a blank notebook and you can paste the pictures in there and even write little notes. So when you want to when you want to feel sentimental, you can look through and say, oh, I remember that. And you can read the memories. And it's like, and it's you still you honor the memories and the feelings, but you don't have that stuff in your space. Now, if it's something that you do like. Start using it. If you've got china that your mother gave you, um, you know, or your, you got from your grandmother, um, and it's in a box, start using it. Use that as your everyday china and get rid of the china that you have. Um, and so, like, if it's or if, it's, if there's like, if you have like, a, if you got a collection of something, pick one or two items that you really like from the collection that you can remember it, and then let the others go. So there's like, there are a lot of things that you can do. And if you're still really on the fence, box it up for, um, take that item, box it up for six months, and then bring it out and look at it and see how, if you feel differently after that six months. Mm, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is when I was moving, I started realizing, I was mm -hmm. like, okay, okay, I've kept this through three moves and I haven't even touched it. It's sitting underneath my bed or it's sitting up in my closet or it's sitting out in the shed. Like, I think it's time to move on with this. And then donating it is a, a great way of doing that too, mm -hmm. because you don't feel, you know, as 
as remorseful when you are when yes. you are donating it. So um, last question, when it comes to everyday things, you know, say I decluttered my space and I got it good, but um, it is a habit, right, to keep it clean. Mm-hmm. What are some simple things that you see people making mistakes on when it comes to staying organized or um, keeping their space decluttered or anything like that that can keep them going in that organizational space? Well, one thing that I always tell people is like decluttering is not a one and done. It's not like, okay, I'm decluttered now. I can go back. Um, you you have to um, – it's, it's something that's an ongoing thing. You want to keep looking at, you know, you keep looking at your closets, keep looking at your spaces. You also want to set up a daily practice. I call it like a daily refresh where you go through, um, take maybe 10 or 15 minutes and go through your space and anything that could be clutter, become clutter, put it back where it goes, you know, go, go through the mail, put that, put that junk mail away and put the, you know, put the mail somewhere. Um, if you've got um, a lot of like magazines out or something like that, put the magazines and the books back where they go. If you've got a bunch of cups, um, like you've got the coffee cup or a glass out on the table, put it in the kitchen. Um, if your clothes are, are strewn about, yeah, take a few minutes and hang those up. And, if you make a habit of doing that every day around the same time, that just kind of helps, um, helps engage that, that habit muscle. Pretty soon you'll be doing it and you won't even think about it. And you'll also be doing the, um, the things, the tasks, like not thinking about it. Like you'll just, you'll just automatically put your clothes up rather than waiting until the time when you're going through and doing the little declutter to pick it up. And that, that in itself just really makes a huge difference um, to keep like you've decluttered and now you want to, you want to keep it um, decluttered. And again, um, like decluttering is not a one and done. You're going to go through and there are going to be other things you'll be ready to let go of. And it's, so it's a, it's just, a, it's, it's a mindset and an ongoing process. What do I, you know, what do I need? What's really serving me and what's not? Yeah. I love how you mentioned it's not a one and done because um, if you do that, it's just going to, it's kind of like a, you know, if you, how you treat your body, right? With health. That's why diets yeah. don't work because if you just do a diet and go back to your old ways, yes. you'll be back to where you were. So right. it's the same with decluttering. If mm-hmm. you're, cluttered and you just clean it up it's gonna you're gonna go back to your old ways a couple of things that I do and I'm not sure if you do this with your your clients but you know one thing is I say to myself am I gonna be able to do this any faster if I do it tomorrow so for example the dishes like I realize it's gonna take the same amount of time now as it will tomorrow and then I also put myself in the present one thing I love doing like so growing up when I, I was adopted by my aunt and uncle and I lived mm-hmm. downstairs in the downstairs bedroom. So mm-hmm. when guests came over, my bedroom was the only one there. And so it always had to be clean and my bed always had to be made. At the time when I was in high school and middle school, I hated it. It mm-hmm. drove me nuts. Um, but now I'm so grateful for it because now when I walk into my room, the feeling I have of walking into a clean space is just like, especially after a long day, the last thing you want to do is walk into a cluttered space. Right. Right. So Mm -hmm. I put myself in the future and maybe I'm like on the edge. I'm just like, ah, I don't know if I want to clean this up, Mm -hmm. you know, but then I think, okay, well, what is it going to feel like when I do clean it up and I come home and then I'm like, okay, it's worth it. So a couple of different things I do when it comes to the, the mental side of it, you know, you know what? Those are actually really two great ideas, and I don't do that, but I just might <laughs> start, do, start doing okay. that. Yeah, so. perfect. Yeah. Well, I do. I do know you have um, some more great ideas and some more tips and tricks for all the viewers and listeners with your free gift. I'd love for you to share a little bit more about that. Yes, I'm really excited about this. I actually have an office refresh um, that that I'm going to um, provide for. Uh, the listeners, the watchers, the, the people, you know, our, our followers here. Um, yeah. It's going to help you. It's going to help you give you an easy plan for, for really getting your office in shape so that, so that you're um, able to, to work and not, not bother by that clutter in, in your office. And I'm, I'm excited about that. 
That would be huge. Yes. The office is one place you definitely want to make sure you're productive. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> for anyone who wants to, um, you know, find you on social media or online, how would they do that? So they can find me at letsacheyourspace.com. Um, I do have a Facebook group called Let's Ace Your Space. It's it's private, but you, you said, but you can find it. I'll you can answer a couple of questions, and I do you know Facebook lives. We have a lot of fun in there. Um, I have a couple of Instagram accounts. I have a Leanne Pruitt Instagram account, and I have a Let's Ace Your Space Instagram account. You can follow me on either of those too. So. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Awesome, Leanne. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And um, I'm really excited to, to make sure I'm acing my space a little bit more. Okay. I can always ace it a little bit more. Absolutely. Um, and it was such a pleasure. So thank you and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too. I so enjoyed this. I appreciate yeah. it. Mm -hmm.